Hey everyone, welcome back to the Art to Life podcast. I am so honored and so excited today to be sharing a very, very special guest, um, someone who is going to um, really open up uh, your eyes and your heart today. Um, I'm talking with Sheree Healy. Sheree Healy is first and foremost, uh, my partner and my sweetheart. And uh, I'm just really honored and excited to um, introduce you to her. And I'll, I'm gonna dive into that in a second, but the frame that we're using today, what we're talking about, and it's something that Sheree and I talk about a lot, um, as you'll understand why in a few minutes, is community and relationship and what that makes possible. And so we're gonna be talking about that and the power of that. Let me just give you a brief overview, a little outline here, a little introduction of Sheree. Sheree, she's an executive coach and brand strategist for women leaders. Her calling is to help you answer yours. Um, she's worked with great leaders for like 25 years at Google, YouTube, Paramount, Nike, Stanford Graduate School of Business, and, and a whole lot more. Her company is called Siren, and you can find her at this, <clears throat> thesirencall.com and on Instagram at Sheree Healy. Sheree, baby, welcome. Thanks so much for being here. Oh, thank you so much <laughs> for having me. <laughs> You know, I'm so excited and, and, and nervous in a way because I think that, you know, uh, sharing personal things and this is this is personal, but it's also it's also public in terms of love and terms of relationship. But I've realized and we've had conversations around this that um, sharing all parts of ourselves is is really really important and i think i've i've waited a long time you know we've we've been together for a few years now and i've always kind of thought well business and personal you know and kind of kept this separate but from the get go what we do who we are as people um it's you know art to life for me and I, and i know for you too it's always been merged so i just want to I'm just noticing how I'm feeling and and I'm just, you know, it's just it's it's opening and it's heartful to feel you here. And it's it's been a while. So I just want to say that and and say thank you for being here. Oh, honey. <laughs> I'm nervous too. I don't know why. We talk all the time, every single day for years now. And it just, yeah, it feels a little different, but it's it's so good. Yeah. And and it's right, it's right in line with what we're talking about today, right? You know, stepping up, becoming yourself. This is what, uh, you know, is so important in, in making art. It's, it's what art to life is all about, building a community where people are moving towards their authenticity more and more and more because everything, it unlocks everything, not just great art. And, and I, I want to, have you share with us a little bit i mean everyone who's listening you guys it turns out <laughs> as crazy as it may sound that sheree and i do exactly the same thing so d dive into it a little for you and you you mostly work with women but um share how this shows up in in your work and what you do for people oh it's so wild because i remember when i first met you i had an idea of who you were and what you did in the world and it took me a minute which is rare for me because I feel like I really see people in their essence, in their soul. I just have a thing that I see the wholeness of people. And you weren't totally clear to me until some moment in the beginning of our relationship when it was like all the veils just dropped. And I said, oh my God, we do the same thing. Like you do it through painting through art and I do it in all these other ways, but it is to help people truly answer the call. That's why my business is called Siren. I believe we all have a calling that we have to answer in this life, a purpose, a reason for being. And if we simplified it down to its essence, we're all supposed to just come here and be ourselves. 
you're supposed to be the ultimate Nicholas Wilton. I'm supposed to be all the way Sheree Healy in all the ways, not a perfect version, the way that the world would have us know, but like with all of our cute flaws and ways and traumas and wounds and shadows and ego and all the parts. And so that's what I feel is my purpose is to help people really step into being all the way them because you know, it makes the world a better place. Yeah, absolutely. It, it makes, it makes everything possible. And, and, you know, it's, I grew up with British parents and pretty unemotional or they were emotional, but they didn't show a whole lot. So for me, it's all, I've all, I feel like I've always been playing catch up and, and, and I, and I realized this, you know, being able to be open constantly, you know, trying to become more yourself and leaning into that. It's, it's scary. It's vulnerable. Um, and, and, but I have, I have any progress I've made. <laughs> I didn't learn it from my parents. That's for sure. But it's through others. And, and I just, you know, I was thinking about this the other day, you know, with where I, when I started with art to life, which was just me, posting something because I was lonely about what I was making. And then when I heard somebody comment back, I just felt seen. And and it 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 wasn't even that they said something that was so helpful. It was just that someone saw me. Like it was just a couple people in the beginning, you know, occasionally someone would respond on something. And and it is so, so powerful that, you know, to to have this, it's everything. You know, it, it's how you progress, it's how you move forward. And and I know that art making or whatever one's moving towards, it's scary. And and having people there that can hold you, can reflect back to you. Um, and we do it with art, right? We can see our progress and somebody can look at something we've made and say, oh my God, I love that. And it it makes you feel like, <laughs> you know, you're on terra firma a little bit. But I'm I'm curious how you, I know you don't, you know, you're not working with art, but you're mostly working with women. And how do you, how do you help people synthesize this? How, how do you work with people? I, I think uh, it, it's so cool to watch, but I, I just want you to kind of share with us what how you do this. Mm. You know, we both, we talk about this all the time that um, I think we both were sevens on the Enneagram. So we're these Epicurean enthusiasts, designers of life. And my, my want for all beings at the, at the bottom of the day is to make their life a work of art. That's where you and I are on the same path is I, since I was a kid, was asking these big questions of like, why are we here? What is the point of all of this? And and please help me not screw it up. Like it's so short <laughs> and I just want to make the most of it. And so I think that's that's coming through everything that I do is helping people celebrate life. It's such a precious gift, you know, and just to enjoy the hell out of it, no matter what you're doing. I mean, I always say we could fulfill our purpose doing any number of jobs, you know, and all of the beautiful people here are probably wanting that job to be art, you know, but you and I always say we think everyone's an artist. We all have creativity coursing through our veins. I think that's what is the life force. It's called Shakti in some traditions or Prana or Chi or, you know, life force, Holy Spirit. It's what's coming through. And if we if we are all filled with that same force, it's creative. We're all creators. And when you're a creator and you recognize yourself as that, your whole point for being is to create and to delight in that and to have people see that and appreciate it, to be known and seen and felt and heard. I mean, that's what's coming through all of us. And in my giant pursuit for understanding all of this, I studied with all kinds of philosophers and scholars and sages and gurus. And at the end of the day, they say you can only truly know yourself through the reflection of another. Yeah. And that's what I think I do is I hold up a really clear mirror to people. I remind them of who they are at their essence. And they say the greatest career strategy is to be used for your essence. 
That's what we all want to do. We want to go out into the world. And what do they say? When our great joy meets the world's great hunger, that's when we're in it. You know, and you and I always talk about the state of overflow, like not just flow. I've been like, yeah, I studied all the high performance experts and worked with all the guys and optimized my schedule and all the things down. (laughs) And then I was like, no, this level of control and containment is going to be the death of me. I can't even pack because I don't like to put myself in a box. <laughs> so it's like, I need that to- is true. <laughs> I know. I know. But the the Shakti and all of us needs to run free. And and I think when they say it only takes one person who believes in you in your life for you to have a shot. If we all could think back to yeah. that one teacher or that one parent, you know, I've learned so much that I hope that I can be that one for people if they ever need me. You know, there's a teaching also that information that goes unshared becomes a burden. Yeah. And as I've been on such a quest, and you are too. If anybody comes to our house, you will see there are books everywhere, <laughs> just stacks. We don't have enough shelves for all the books that we keep collecting. And and I think that's what is the same same about us is it's got to come through it's got to be in the state of overflow that what what's having its way with us can be shared you know it's just yeah. come of us it's and pouring. this and this is cultivated and i love that word because it puts us in the driver's seat right and it's something we're doing um, you know, we we're we're getting going with the Creative Visionary Program. We have so many new people coming into our world, and um, and it's so cool. But it's all the same. We start at the same place, and I know you do this with the am- amazing women that you work with. You know, getting first and foremost that that fire back, that energy back. How how do we do this? You know, and it, and for us and i and i think for you for you too and and what you coach is really reconnecting with with what brings you alive and i, I mean i say this all the time and it and it's but it's really true you can <clears throat> when you're in this higher frequency or more energy or more uplifted um much more is possible you, you're you're bolder you you're more curious you laugh more you connect with people you know i notice people i mean it's crazy i if i'm just in nick i i miss so much but when i'm in a different state i i have conversations with people at the supermarket i mean the whole complexion of my life is different so how how do we stay in this and um you know I've watched you now, you guys, I get to be on the back end of, you know, Sheree works with so many women and works with groups of women. And I I get to listen in, I'm walking by her studio and I hear what's going on. Um, But share with us how you, you know, where your starting place is. I mean, you know, you, you, these women that you work with, they're all, they're all going for it, but everybody needs coaching everybody needs to be reminded of this and how do you uh where where do you start with people what a good question and i love the way you just said that the whole complexion of your life is different it's so beautiful yeah, yeah um the starting place for me is always what do you want i think that's our job you know as creators it's the thing that stops everybody is but i don't know how some people don't know what they want, but I always challenge them. I'm like, but if you did know, what would you want? <laughs> you know, it's like there's all kinds of tricky coachy ways to get in there. I think at the at the in our soul and in the deepest part of our being, we absolutely know what we want, but the world makes us forget, you know? Oh, the- that's so great. That's absolutely the world makes us forget. We you know, and it's like, I don't even know what I want, you know, and you just get so muddled. I totally relate to that. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. Because there's so many distractions for crying out. It's like the phone, the noise, the news, the people, the dramas, the, all the things that are going on in us, all of our feelings. There's just so many things that want to pull us away. And I think my job is to bring you back. You know, sometimes it's zooming way out and and asking crazy questions like, what would your 90 year old self say? Mm-hmm. You know? 
I can take them into meditations that would reconnect them to their heart or to their subconscious mind where all their codes are, all the all the remembering. It is the nature of existence. I've asked all my teachers, when does the forgetting stop? And they're like, cute girl, just never going to stop. I mean, if we were to be enlightened, then yes. But the forgetting and remembering is part of it. So if you can relax into that, and know that there are certain moments in life where there's concealment, you know, that's the nature of things. And that's why we thought to talk about this today, because when you're around people who love you or who are also on the journey, who can shine the light back on you and say, oh, oh wait, you're amazing. Or look what I see in your art. I've seen you do this all the time. Really, like even with me, I I do not paint, but now I do apparently because <laughs> I went on retreat with you last year for the first time, and that is one form of creativity I I thought I was never going to be able to do. And for everybody who knows Nick, you will and you can because when you're with Nick, he makes it so easy. And you sat me next to you in Morocco. And you played with me. You just said, make a mark and pick a color you like. And we blasted the music and we just played. And I think that's exactly what I do without the paint. I I make people laugh. I I sit with a, with a leader who it, they are all wildly driven to make the world a better place. And so when you can tap into that hunger, that wanting to cause impact, then I work with that. It's like not so much about us. It's about the people you want to help. And when you can make it around, make it about the people you want to impact, the people you want to uplift with your art, the people who you're here to help that you know you're driven to guide or help in some way, then then it gets easier. Yeah. And the refreshing message is we're not supposed to know how. Right. That's that. The how appears, that's the magic. And that's what you've shown me in your art. You'll find your way as you go. You'll be painting and layering and painting over and scratching through and painting over. And that messed me up in the workshop. I was like, wait, is it allowed? I can, I can just keep painting over and keep going. And, and that's what I'm doing with these women is, is saying it's, it's okay. The how will appear. The glorious art that you are making is going to come and then it's going to be better than we could have ever imagined. So when we let go of that part, it can flow through. Yes. I love that. Just when you let go, it, you can, fl it flows and, you know, and there's this kind of workaround where, or not even a workaround, but it's a just different orientation of understanding what we're talking about here and feeling i mean ultimately the the community if it's a community like art to life community we are a community of people who about possibility about you're in this and you can be anything you can go anywhere you're eligible you're part of something that of a group of people who believe uh, they're on a path to self transformation that, that this is a good thing and we want to grow and we want to change and that is powerful to experience that as opposed to just being by yourself or you know my mom always calls me this and you know you can get so bogged down and just so like uh you know just it's so easy for ourselves to tell ourselves a story uh that's way too small for ourselves and yeah. that, you know I, i've seen I, I know this this idea of well do it for you, but also think about your contribution, about what you're doing. And it's like, it's so easy to think, well, I'm just making my art in my studio and it's not, you know, I'm not like a leader, you know, <laughs> right? Like you're working with these amazing women, but for everyone here, you know, who, who are artists, who are making things, when you make something that you care about and it's meaningful and you put it into the world, it has a ripple effect. It, it inspires other people. It tells other people that even though the whole thing's crazy and, and the world's chaotic, that this is important, that, that I'm here and I'm going to share something of myself. I have faith, I have belief, and 
That's powerful. And, and I think it's helpful, you know, what you were just saying about they want to make the world a better place, right? And I think that can be intimidating for people. Like, I don't do that. But, you know, I think artists are that we're like here, we're going to save the world, <laughs> you know, like this is, I, I've had women who've come to workshops who are moms and this is like their first, their kids are like three and six and this is their first thing they've done for themselves. And they, they're guilt ridden and they can't work. They keep getting on their phone and, you know, but they're like, finally, they pulled this five days off. And, but what I share with them is like, listen, this is so great. You're here and don't feel bad you know, yeah. understand that your your kids are going to see you making art, <laughs> like, and being happy. Like, that is, that's an incredible legacy. I mean, that's an incredible thing to show a six-year-old. Oh my God, my mom not, is not just the person who feeds me porridge every morning. My mom, look what she's doing over there. That's what joy looks like that's what's important that she's she's staying within herself as well she's giving to herself i mean it's powerful and that really helps like so i'm sharing this because i think it's helpful for us to realize that our art isn't just ours we're doing this for the world too in, in, you know in, in a way Do you, i mean i know you know this but I, I think that's i think that's really helpful for people who who don't who can feel disconnected you know this is the most essential thread that we share, that we say things like, we're going to change the world. We're going to make the world a better place. You know, like it may sound so lofty and so out there. And we believe together this, we've shared this since like these early days of our long talks, you know, that we all have a gift to give that if not shared is lost to the world forever. And that gift is us. I mean, I can say it's your beautiful art. It's my work with these beautiful beings. It's, you know, in the details, but at the most simplest level, we don't want to die with our music still in us. We are here to become us. We're here to let the divine pour through our eyes and be us in this lifetime. And everybody gets so stressed out about, you know, okay, Nick, you're saying this is for the world, how it's going to make the world a better place. I don't even identify as a leader. You know, I'm just trying to get through the day. But think about the last time you were in a room, say you went to get your coffee and somebody walked in that just was good with themselves. You can feel it. That kind of person that's just at peace in their skin. There's a level of joy, which is the highest frequency in the yoga in Sanskrit, it's called Ananda. It can be measured. It's the highest frequency there is, love and joy. That's what we're here to know in this lifetime. And so if you can walk into a room radiating that, you are changing the world. It has a ripple effect. It touches mm -hmm. everyone. They take that, they go into their day, they feel a little bit better. Yeah. And we think about the wars that are going on right now. And if we want to stop those wars, we have to stop being at war with ourselves. You know, yeah. I, to be in this life, to say, I make art, I'm making the world a more beautiful place. I'm an example of self-expression. I'm moving about the world in my worth, not my wound. I'm not in the cheapest seat in the house in a state of fear all the time but I'm actually in a state of creation. And that shows other people that it's possible. You've broken all the myths about the starving artist. You showed people that you can actually make the world a more beautiful place, make art and not be starving. You know, you following your own path has shown others the way. And I made a choice to move out of my job in corporate America at some point because I wanted to show my kids that it's possible to go for your dreams, that it's possible to make a living out of the gifts that you're born with. Yes. I have lots of papers and lots of permission slips to do mm. this work, but I know that I was made for this. I got in trouble as a little tiny girl for being on the phone too much. My mom would come and rip it out of the wall and be <laughs> like, do your homework. And we laugh about it now that I was like studying to do what I do. I'm paid to be on the phone and now I'm <laughs> Zoom. You know, we know yeah. 
see at our very young age what we're here for. Yeah. And it, and there's all the breadcrumbs. I mean, I you look back, you and and this is what we're doing. I mean, I I think with with art, you know, the, the art is yes, we make a we make a picture, we make a thing, and there's a bunch of the things we've made and we improve at it. But really what we're doing is we're we're becoming ourselves more and more and more. And and you know, I came to what you're sharing here. I, I didn't even have words for it. I just saw, I saw this, I experienced it first, and then I kind of backfilled it with the explanation. And then, you know, what you're actually sharing is is exactly what was happening. I would see people open up in workshops and their art when the when the container, when the place, when the safety and when people felt held and when they could believe that this was possible for themselves. You know, there's like this just they're away from all the stresses and breakfast is coming kind of thing. And then then the art then they could be more self-expressed. Like we can create, we can create the conditions for ourselves in our life. Uh, we can learn this. And, and then the expression is, it starts to become more and more um, true for ourselves. And, and I'm so visual, like I can look at my old art and we've joked about it where you see, oh my God, you were so you were so contained four years ago, you know, it's interesting <laughs> to be in relationship with somebody who just sees all this, um, you know, it's almost like, oh my God, don't look at, that's the old Nick. I mean, we have like the old Nick and the new Nick and, you know, but, but we're all on this journey, right? We're all, and for artists, we have the little visuals, the story of it, you know, but I love that idea that we just, we're just moving towards it. We Maybe we don't know what it is we're here to do on this planet, but we certainly know if we like blue more than yellow and that's the beginning, right? It's the discernment. It's the choosing that we do in our life and, and especially our art. We just need to, to, and we don't need to know why. That's what's so interesting. Like it's intuitive. Share with us about this because I am always talking about this and I, I, you know, it's just from my experience. And I know this is an area that you've studied so much, understanding intuition, understanding the soul, like everybody has the higher version of themselves that you can just say, well, just check in with the higher version of yourself. You can kind of think and you go, yep, <laughs> I actually do know what is the best thing I should do now, you know, like, but sometimes I can't access it. And I know that you provide this for people, you guide them towards this part of themselves. Share with us a little bit about that because I think it's so interesting. Yeah, that's such a good question because what you were just talking about, I think needs to be highlighted. It's all related. The magic of what you do and why people get the results that they do is because there's a drive in us that is the strongest drive. Like I'm trained to be a strategic interventionist and a results coach in a way that I know how to work with these drives and desires to get people to make change, to move forward. And you do it in a couple of ways. And then I'll get to the knowing and the intuitive part is you tap into that drive that is the strongest human drive to be congruent with who we think we are. So if I'm an artist, I make art every day. I go to the studio. I live like an artist. I mean, we look at you, you've got paint on yourself all the time in some place in your body. <laughs> and you move about the world as an artist. That's your identity. You know, you go to a gathering, a workshop, or you go to the studio online and you put yourself shoulder to shoulder with other artists and you do art. It brings you back to that sense of self, to I am an artist. I think that's what I've seen a lot your work is a lot of people have trauma around their art and people who told them that they weren't good. And so they don't believe they can be like, I didn't believe I could paint. You know, if you identify as something, that's a huge way to make change. So when I call people, when I call these women um, leaders, but I say, okay, here's a story. There was a woman who came out on the stage at a conference that I was at called Emerging Women. Her name's Tara Sophia Moore. And she stood in front of 300 to 400 of us. 
all women. And she said, raise your hand if you remember that moment before you were born, when you were asked to be on the transition team to help us to usher in a new era. And I got chills. I looked around, everybody starts to cry. All the women are raising their hand. They're like, I remember that moment. In a, in a really deep sense, you know, we knew we came here at this wild time in human history. And Dr. Zach Bush will say this, if you're alive right now, you're here for a big reason. Because my God, who would, who would be embodied during this moment? It's just nuts out there, right. you know? So when I can have these great beings who I feel we are all great beings, no matter where we are on the journey, we are all sit shoulder to shoulder with others and, and say, okay, I think I can go it like Brene Brown says, I can go into the arena, you know, because I'm not alone. I'm a part of a team. I'm a part of like this movement of art to life. I'm with others who are also confronting their fears, their little parts, the parts of the ego that say we're not good enough, that we won't be enough, that we won't be loved, all those things. The, the safety in numbers, the way that you create community and belonging, the way I do in these circles of women or in my care means we can deal with the fear. We can deal with the worry, you know, we can deal with the stress because we're not in it by ourselves. And beyond that, it can't be that we rely on things outside of ourselves. You mm -hmm. know, if the studio hours aren't open, you know, if the Zoom isn't until Friday, what do we do in the meantime? And that's the practice of going within to the siren I call at the bottom of us at, in the in the fire, you know, in the belly, that creative fire is who we all are. And we, because of the glorification of busy in our, in our world, modern world, we don't get enough stillness and our lives usually aren't spacious enough for us to know ourselves as that part. But when we can drop in, and I do this with my 21-year-old daughter, I was doing it when she was 10, um, what does your knowing say? What, what if you just close your eyes for a minute and go to her, what does she say? You know, your high self, your true self, we could call it all sorts of names. The siren, the queen, the, the essence of you. If you move about life connected to her, and of course there are moments when you can live as her and be at one and move really as her, but I think we're all on the journey there. You know, I can't yeah. fail her and just stay there all the time. <laughs> Unfortunately, cause you know, fear will hit or stress will hit and it'll take me out. And then all of a sudden I'm the little girl. And she's driving the bus. She like took over the steering wheel. And there's a great book that I, I do a lot of parts theory with clients. So I work on these different parts and uh, no bad parts is a great book to read. And it's all this theory that we are made up of so many different sides. It's so many different colors, you know, and that we can't say no blue is allowed. You can't, you know, you can't push away any part of yourself. Like you have been such a teacher for me because I've never been in such a healthy, beautiful relationship. I haven't been so widely loved in all my parts. You aren't afraid of the parts of me that get cranky or tired or hungry. And, you know, the parts of me that I don't always have all my skills on. I know so many things. I have so many tools. So do you, but we don't always use them. You yeah. know, you still love me and hold me in that. And that means that those parts are getting healed and integrated. You know, in my siren circles with women, we are allowing each other to bring all the parts to be really high and amazing and crushing all of our goals. And then to be really afraid and stressed and little girly and not all of our highest selves and to be vulnerable and loved. And when you can be held in that and just know that you get to paint over and keep going, yeah. you become more you, you become all of you. Like I love myself more now than I ever have because of you. Yeah. 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 That's so beautiful. 
And it's just, it's a remarkable, isn't it? That, you know, we know, I mean, every problem I've had, every train wreck I've had, the the upside, the the learning, the the the, the miraculous things in my life have come through the difficulty. I mean, it, they just you know, and so to try to exclude a, a part of of ourselves that maybe you know we don't want anyone to know about, or you know, I mean, it's it, it it's crazy because the whole package, the all of it is is needed i mean it really truly is especially the the breakdowns the the mistakes and i don't even call them mistakes you know when we're when we're making our art you know the the unknowing the loss of control it's so powerful to yeah. be able to step into that and and be okay with that and, and i think really art is just this playground this rehearsal for life like we can learn how to be more comfortable with uncertainty in art and then we can be more comfortable with uncertainty in our life and oh. and this way of being and, and this is another kind of thing i want to touch on because it it's been a miraculous in my life and is when you hold this when you're able to be the siren or be more of yourself, just feel more of yourself and bring more of it. When you're around those people, that community that accepts all of that, more comes, things come and it's magnetic in a way that what comes into your life because you can, because like it comes as a result of your way of being. Yes. You, you know what I mean? It's like we attract certain things based on, how we're feeling and and who we are becoming and and i just i've seen this and and you know it dovetails beautifully into me meeting you and and i never thought that i would i didn't really think I, you know i kind of given up i mean i i love people and i love community and friends and art but i i kind of I just didn't know how I hadn't had the most best, you know, track record in relationships. And there was lots for me to learn there and look within myself to see what I was doing wrong. And that was a whole process, but meeting you and, and I mean, if you're listening to this call, I mean, like, how is it possible that I'm, that I attract, that I meet someone. This is not like take an ad out. This is just a person. Sheree just comes into my life, not through, you know, an app and is, and we do this. This is what we do. This is, we have the same vision. I mean, I, it's just like miraculous, but it shows up in other ways. Right. And it's because we are a certain way. It's because we're moving towards who we want to be that the universe brings us things that allow us to continue. And I, I know I'm not saying it the beautiful way that you can. I just want to hear how you talk about this because this is, this is what you do for people and, or they, you allow, you show them how to do this for themselves. It's, it's beautiful to watch and I've seen it firsthand, but how you talk about it, I think is, um, you know, it's, it's, we know this to be true. Oh, baby. Yeah. I mean, it is a miracle that we found each other that uh, it's like when you're ready, you know, the teacher appears the way they say it's, it's when, when you've reached um, any, whatever your next level of frequency is, you know, uh, the right and perfect match will come. So back in the day, I had partners that taught me what I needed to learn back then. And, and at the moment that you and I went on a trip to Marfa, we were going on an art trip with friends just to go explore this wondrous place. And it was like, I call it like a pre-membering, you know, where your souls recognize the, the, their desire. So I think that we all have desires that most of us deny, you know, most of us don't believe we can have. Mm-hmm. 
you and I believed, I think at some point you, you wanted love again, you wanted to find the partner, but you had kind of given up and you and I had both just gotten out of some difficult relationships. And it was like this journey of, of trusting that we are worthy of that, you know, that we, that we will have, I think we have an internal GPS system inside of us that is always directing us towards the next right and perfect experience and to our partners and to whatever, whatever our soul is here to experience. And it's, you can take all the different side routes and you can take your time. And we took our time coming in and out of the relationship, but it's the, it's the trusting that when that desire and that longing gets intense, you know, when it gets heated and it gets really frustrating and it's just so powerful that, that you keep walking into it. I think that means that our desires are right around the corner, that they're really, mm -hmm. really close. Yeah. Okay. It, the, the disturbances and the, and the, and the restlessness, um, I, uh, you know, I, so we, you guys, we, we were invited on this trip to Marfa and I, I didn't know Cherie and <clears throat> anyway, so we're, we're on, there's like 20 or 30 people and, and unbeknownst to me, uh, you know, I kept, we kept like, oh, we're going to the museum and we're all, we're all walking in a group. And I kept like, oh my God, there's the woman again. And Cherie and I kept end up like, where did everybody go? And we kept you know, spending time walking to the museum and going to the different places. And, oh my God, that's the place at the table. And I, I, I sort of learned later that our dear friend, Ivy Ross, who put the trip together, kind of had a little bit of, you know, she had a little bit of her own knowing and, and kind of orchestrated this a bit. So we would, you know, she's like told, told people leave, leave them alone and let, let them just meet each other. And, you know, and I'm just bumbling along Nick, you know, but I thought that was really funny. And what, but we, I, you know, it was just talking. It was just these amazing conversations over this weekend. And, and what I, you know, and I in, you know, not, not, overflowing with confidence person at this time in my life, I didn't do anything about this. I was insanely attracted and I, I'm like, oh my God, I, I can't believe I, I, I want to do something here, but I, I was so scared. So I didn't do anything, but, um, but what I, what it did for me, it, you know, initially was it, it told me that, that there was a possibility for me to, to, I just was so amazed that I could meet somebody that I, I connected so well with. I mean, I, it seems so s simple or obvious or, or short-sighted, but I really hadn't had that experience for a long time where someone really saw me and, and I, and I, I felt like I could be more self-expressed. I mean, it's literally like what we're talking about. And I hadn't done that before. And I was scared. Yeah. No, yeah. you know, that's I, I wish I could say I was like, you know, I was just I moved in, you know, but it was it was uh, it was crazy. Uh, but but sure. that's what it was. It was stepping out of myself to trust this new thing. Yeah, but it was step by step by step. And I think that's it. It's like little steps forward. That was the way that we got here because you made a painting after that trip that you said to me, you've changed my art forever. You were, you were like, yeah, well, yeah. no. I, so, so the long story, you know, we had this amazing weekend and then we kind of got together afterwards. I was terrified, but we spent some time together and, and it didn't work out for various reasons. And I don't know, you know, I, I think, I don't know. It just didn't, it, it was like, didn't work. And I was pretty crushed. Um, because I, I wanted it to, but I was, I, the, the sort of residual, the afterglow of meeting somebody that I'm like, I could be, I just met somebody that I could be with for the rest of my life. Like this is possible. I, I didn't, I didn't go on a dating app. I just I'm like, wow. And, and if that could happen, maybe, maybe it could happen again. Like I couldn't believe it. And I was, it didn't, you know, it didn't work out. But I was, 
and I showed a side of myself to another human being and they said yes. And and I kind of understood in a way. I, I didn't take, I understood that Cherie's, you know, you were working on stuff and I certainly was, and it wasn't- I had a healing to do my last relationship. That's yeah, all. It, it, I didn't you know, want to enter I mean, this and not have it be good. Yeah. And I, and I think, you know, most guys, I know if, if a woman says to you, you know, listen, it was so great. And, but you know what, I'm just, I'm just out of a relationship and I, I don't really, you know, I want, I don't, this is so good. I don't want to ruin it and I'll see you later. That's kind of a fail. And if you know, it's like, it's the softest, nice, polite way to just say, you know, not interested, but for <laughs> some reason I believed you or I just, it didn't, it didn't take me out. I just felt like, wow. And, and so what was crazy though, is I just felt alive, man. I felt so alive from the experience, from being around you. And, and, and I, I just took it into my studio. And my work completely changed. And, and I'll, you know, and the, I know the paint, I named the painting after you and it wasn't, we were done. We weren't going to be in a relationship and you didn't even know about this. This was not a strategy. You were off and you lived, you know, down the peninsula and it was, you know, it was like a good try, but no, and maybe we'll be friends kind of thing. But um, I'm telling you, it, it unleashed a thing in me. It changed my work and if you scroll back and the painting is called Cherie, you'll see that's what I felt like. That's who you who you brought out in me. It was mm -hmm. it was it was in me, but it was it was a, a it was fire. It it was a it was a is show more, be more, and you know a community of one can do this. A community of hundred thousand can do this. This is, this is the power of, of what we're talking about here, you know, but uh, yeah, it, it, it changed, it changed me. Uh, it was really extraordinary. I'm be forever grateful, but this is, this is, this is what we need, right? We need the reflection of, of another. We have to, we have, I have in these siren groups, these women coming and saying they're afraid, you know, that they have, at the highest levels, these women, some of them are C-level, own their own businesses, and they still have imposter syndrome. And, you know, you could I've told some men this, and they're like, no way. I, these women are ballers. I can't believe that. And it's like, no, in the dark of night, in safe places, which is what you provide in Art to Life and for me, in safe places, you, you can bring these things out and realize you're not alone. Everybody else in the group is like me, too. Same. And then it's like, there's no more shame, yeah. you know? And I feel that's what we've done for each other in, in our little, in our relationship that radiates out into this community, into our communities. That's what we're all doing is we're wired for relationship. You know, I tried to become a swami in, in, in a ashram because I thought that that was the fast path to God, that that's the way you learn and grow the quickest. And the swamis were like, no, darling, if you want the best path, go be a householder, get married, have children, be in community, don't meditate in a cave all day, because this is what has you know your true nature and all of it. So what happened for us is like your fire got lit and then together our fires started blazing. It was like, wait a minute, I can be more you like blow air on my fire. You're throwing logs on it all the time saying you need to make your podcast. You need to get out there. You need to share yourself. You're fucking amazing. Like all the, th the ways that you are okay with you, that you've integrated so much of you at this point in life makes you a safe place for me to do the same. Yeah. Oh, uh, you're okay. Like you are so humble and everybody who follows you will say this, that you're like, I don't know. It was terrible what I just made. I can't stand it, you know, or you're so honest and, and open about your process and about who you are. And so that makes it okay for all of us to be normal and human. It makes it okay for us to make mistakes yeah. as you're okay with yours. You're not, you're not judging me. I mean, my, 
my past relationships, I learned to please. And I'm sure every woman in the house can relate to the people pleasing and the good girl that we're all raised to be, get all A's, do a good job, don't make anybody upset because they'll leave. You know, guys do leave when they don't feel like they like all of you or they don't know how to hold all of you. And where I've leaned all the way into you is because you and I both want the wild. We want the free, we want all of it. We want all the colors, all the flavors. And it just makes it okay. It makes everything okay. And that's where your gift is you help people become more courageous and more risky because what once required control, you know, because they needed to be good and make it good and not mess it up, you know, the control moves over into another form of certainty, which is community, a safety. We don't need to hold the steering wheel anymore. We can relax because our certainty is dialed. Mm. And I always say the people who do the best in life are the ones who can handle the most uncertainty because that is life. Life is uncertain. And you can only handle a lot of uncertainty when you have a lot of certainty. So go back to the high self. That's your certainty, your soul, and you rest in community and it makes everything else possible. I love the way you describe that. And, and I love the fact that, you know, and and I feel like I'm doing this in, in the coaching that I'm involved in, in art to life. We're just reminding people what they already know. <laughs> you know, yeah. this is not a become like this and you're gonna crush it. It's like no. you just forgot. And and we just gotta kind of get you go going. And then you're gonna walk, you know, we're just gonna walk along with you just by your side for a little while, and then you're gonna go off. And and you know, that's that's, that's some principles my... to hold on to. Yeah. 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 That is really at the ultimate of coaching and and God, I've just I've learned so much um, and I'm so grateful for so many people. And, and I mean, especially you and just the wisdom that you hold and and you guys to see her coaching these women. And, you know, she was saying, you know, we are talking about these amazing leaders and, you know, best selling authors and you know, it's like, I'd just be intimidated sitting in the same room, but then hearing them talk about, you know, how, how, um, they don't feel enough. They, they're, they're, they're they're so scared or they feel so vulnerable or they just want to change their whole life. You know, it's like, we all feel the same. We have these, we all need to be given coaching we all need to be seen and and i just i see how powerful that is like please save me from myself i'm always saying this to my team right you know it's like i can just feel it it's like this has got too much of me all over this thing somebody step in please because this isn't gonna be so good (laughs) like do you know what i mean like when you feel like you're just it's like a painting where you're so worried about it it's got too much of the nervous Nelly Nick involved in it, you know? Oh, well, that's just one of your parts. And we love that part. That part can't run your show all the time, but when he comes to the surface, it's for a good reason. Mm-hmm. And then you get to be held by your team, by me, you know, to go, okay, you're, what are you blasting through? What are you healing? What level now are you going to? We're growing. I think you and I are growth junkies. That's why we have so many books. Yeah, that's true. We love to learn. And, and in that way, it, it kind of makes everything all right, because we're just learning and growing together, you know, but it's true. It's, I, I'm amazed every single day that I get to keep the company that I do. I, for some reason, magnetize the most loving beings. They are so mind blowing. And it is, I think the reason I am where I am now, even to be in your company, babe, because you've done such great things in the world and to see and share your humanity 
to know that we're all wired with the two same fears that we won't be enough and we won't be loved, that we all came in with a wound, that we all have a shadow that God forbid comes out every now and then that's so wild and, and to know that it's all okay. You know, that we're still going to be loved. We all belong. I mean, that we trust I think everybody listening belongs here right now. You you didn't find yourself here by accident. Yeah. You guided, you know, and to just rest in that, that's that coming back to your knowing that there is something conspiring for you all the time. That if you just lean back just a little bit, you know, I think this is where the magic comes from is just a little bit of trust and surrender to just allow yourself to be guided by that knowing by your intuitive knowing. And all it is, is just putting your hand on your heart or closing your eyes and asking and, and know that you're in such good company, you know, that if all these, if we've all found each other together in this, we've all arrived at this place together to have this conversation, we're doing something right. Wow. (sighs) So great. So well said. Cherie, it's it's an honor. Thank you so much for being here. And I hope all of you guys, uh, you've probably fallen in love with Cherie as everybody does and as much as I do. Um, it's it's wonderful to just to hear what you're doing, how you're helping people, and just just the way you you speak of it is it's it's so uplifting and it's so possible for all of us. So thanks so much for being here. And um, for those of you guys listening and for those of you who are coming in now, I know we have a lot of folks that have been coming in through the free workshop and the Creative Visionary Program. I just want to welcome you. And um, you know, this we're making something here and I'm, I'm just really proud of the fact that um, you're part of it. Uh, there's show notes uh, if you want to find more out about um, Cherie and her work. Uh, her website's called thesirencall.com, right? And um, and you can find her on Instagram at Cherie Healy. Thanks mm-hmm. so much for being here, you guys. Cherie, babe, thank you. I love you. I love you too. Bye.